Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Build. I'm your host, Cole Delbert from HuffPost. Today, we're joined by Avin Jogia, an actor we've watched grown up on our screens over the last decade on series like Victorious, Caprica, Twisted, and most recently, the Stars comedy Now Apocalypse. But who knew that all this time, he was also nurturing a passion for storytelling and writing, and now he's released his first book, Mixed Feelings. This raw, powerful, and necessary collection of poems and stories explores what it means to grow up as a mixed race person in a world that is intent on putting everybody into a box and fixated on racial identity. Brimming with anger, hope, and beauty, and personal testimonials from Jogia and friends, mixed feelings marks the arrival of a major new literary voice. So let's give it up for Avid. That's, a, that's quite an intro, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. No, thank you. Thanks. It's really, it's fun to come and promote this book. And it's been, uh, it's a different, obviously a different thing for me to, to write a book. I didn't even know I was writing a book <laughs> until just recently, until like about like two years ago. And um, I've been doing poetry sort of my whole life. Um, I thought it was like, um, when I was like 14, I was writing poetry, like from the perspective of like some sort of lord from like the 17th century, like with like, you know, drinking absinthe and like, you know, like having a, you know, a mistress, like 12 years old. Um, so that wasn't really me, you know, and I, I've written poetry for a long time uh, from, you know, just kind of general perspectives and then um, sort of narrowing down on the idea of mixed feelings as the sort of subject that I want to speak about, the idea of being mixed race and what racial, racial identity is in this climate. Well, it's such like a, an honest and sort of uncompromising read that raises so many pressing questions about how we see ourselves and how others see us. Um, and I know it's going to mean so much to so many. Um, but first, I want to sort of, yeah, talk about how you came to this, because we know you primarily from the acting space. But I know a lot of times performers and entertainers, when they get into the industry, they have sort of other goals in mind, too. Sure. So as you're saying, writing was always this passion for you. Was putting out a book always part of the game plan? Um, yeah, I mean, I was uh, I had a unreasonable expectations of myself as a young person. I was like, well, I have I'll have a novel out at twenty, and then you know I'll move on to design, and by the time I'm thirty, so I was already kind of like weirdly had this in the plan. So, uh, but yeah, but as far as like writing a book, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I've always been an actor, but I've never really identified with that label, which is sort of funny because that's sort of what this book is all about, is not identifying with the labels from which people give you, you know. I've done acting and I will continue to act and I will continue to write and I will continue to direct and I'll continue to make music and I'll continue to make stuff, make stuff. How does this feed you differently than, say, starring on a TV show? Well, well this is great because I'm my own master on this. Like, it's just me and my computer. And if I don't get it done, I don't get it done. Um... Whereas, like, you know, on a television show, a lot of it has to do with, uh, you know, waiting for the part, the right part, and waiting for, um, you know, on set, waiting to, to, it's a lot of waiting, it's a lot of, like, being on set and waiting to sort of, like, shoot, and waiting to, like, the right part that's, like, really exciting to you that you want to do. With this is I'm in complete control of the whole creative process. You know, I start in the morning, and I write, and I'm able to write poetry all day, and, I, you know, you treat it like a, a nine to five. You get in at nine, and you write. And you write and you write and you write and you stop at like I probably stop at like two, um, but uh, you know I'm, I'm an inherently lazy person, um, and so yeah, so uh, so yeah, it fuels me differently in that regard, and it, it'll just make, and also just generally I um, I find it very freeing, especially to talk about subjects like this. It's just I it, I find it uh, a way of just releasing my because uh, you can waste like I could sit there and I could have tweeted like 500 times. And I would have 500 tweets and not a book. This is why I don't talk that much on social media about the shit that outrages me. Because I think that's wasting the fire. Like, why am I going to waste that? I'd rather just sit on it, stay angry, write a book, and then come out of it with a book. And, and I can meditate on the idea and what's exactly pissing me off about the whole thing or that makes me empowered or whatever it is. I think that a lot of people, they, you know, because of social media, they get their itch scratched. Uh, too early and then before they can actually make something creative. Yeah, I mean, a, a book certainly makes a bigger imprint. Um, yeah. You know, you mentioned growing up always writing, and, you know, I was one of those kids, too, that sort of obsessively journaled growing up because I felt like I had this internal need to record what was happening at the time. Um, and, you know, this is, book is so much about your own history and your family's history. Did you also feel growing up that you were sort of intent on documenting all of those things? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. 
um, and I was intent on documenting it in the in in I, I like I can't I'm not the guy who's like Tuesday, this thing happened met this person like I, the, the the facts aren't as important to me as the uh, as the feelings and I have like poems from my entire um, my entire childhood that that really reflect my my feelings at the time I mean even the stuff that I make fun of like the sort of you know like uh, Lord Byron esque sort of poetry that I was into. Or like Edgar Allan Poe sort of poetry that I was into. It was it was reflecting on just my need to like sort of be greater than myself, and that's what I think all art is about. It's about like sort of empowering yourself and the need to feel to to enlarge yourself with the with the with the mythos or the or the um, the kind of like energy around uh, you know kind of being bigger than yourself. You know, I was wondering, in sort of the central piece of the book, it's actually sort of excerpt in the back, you write, I'm not half of anything, I'm a full being. And yeah. I was wondering if you could speak a little bit about your experience growing up and your family's history and sort yeah. of how that is reflected maybe in that sentiment. Well, I, I'm a half East Indian, half Irish English. Um, I was raised in Vancouver, Canada. My, my father was born in the UK, in England. His family is from East Africa, from Uganda and Kenya. Uh, but they're Indian. Um, so yeah, my, my heritage is mixed I as far as like the type of from my my actual racial background, but also my my nationality. You know, I've been you know our family has been li lived in Africa, lived in the UK, lived in Canada, and so um, that's sort of where this all begins. And then as far as like my racial identity, as we go into me becoming an actor, because uh, remember, as an actor, you're constantly aff affronted or faced with what you are. You know, because you're, you know, that's what you are selling yourself as the, like, so I'm going to get this part. So then you're like, I found myself waiting around for uh, a part that was waiting, like, for a mixed Indian Irish guy. And you can't do that. So, and, and, and sort of like maybe uh, talking about, you know, why we feel a need to have such uh, uh, really strong boxes when it comes to race and it comes to, um, um, the way that the way that we represent race, right? Like, it, um, the and the nuance is completely lost. You know, like I, if I'm auditioning for the Indian best friend, I'm not getting that part because I don't fulfill the thing that you know, sort of, a Western society or the American society has determined Indian people are supposed to look and act like, because they have a monolith version of what Indian people are supposed to look and act like. So, um, so yeah, so that's sort of where, um, sort of like where my feelings of my my own that's where my questions start start to arise of like okay so what is m me then i don't fit into this thing that they've presented for me as an option i'm not white so what is it you know and so and then i realized what the what the, what i what i did realize which i think was so uh um really uh relieving to me or at least unifying i found a culture within mixed people and and, and uh, I went from being alone to having like so many people who reach out to me like these are my they, my exact experiences regardless of what their mix is, you know they could be Chinese Italian or Filipino you know Nigerian, but the mixedness is what they we all have a culture around that and the culture is not being enough for this and not being being too much for that or whatever. And so I think that perspective, especially in a world that is increasingly polarized by race, increasingly more divisive and more divisive, from having that perspective, a different viewpoint, a vantage point to sort of see the landscape. You know, I think we see the board in a different way. Yeah. I mean, and that's such a strength to this book because it's not only your story, but it's testimonials from all these different right. types of people. And it sort of blends together in this sort of yeah, amazing impression. Um, and you do feel that sense of community just sort of going through these pages. Well, that was the thing that I thought was so really the most exciting for me was that um, I started off by writing poetry just but by myself about my own experiences. Uh, and it went rather badly, to be perfectly honest. It was not good. Um, <laughs> and, then, uh, and, then I, um, and then I started interviewing people. And then that's when it just all started to gel for me. It's like, oh, we do have a, a, a kind of a collective cultural experience. Sorry, you were going to say something. No, no, no. Um, I mean, that's that's so important to understanding <laughs> this project. I mean, I, I, you know, I think of understanding our own identities as sort of this uh, lifelong pursuit, and, sure. and the and sort of implications it has uh, for how we move through the world. But um, I'm curious for you, was there a turning point where you um, were able to sort of wholly embrace both sides of yourself um, and tune out sort of the messaging that you are not whole, or is that sort of a daily 
ac- uh, mental exercise that you this have book, to go through. This book, I mean, that would see that this would be the time where I feel the most unified in my identity. And also, this is the thing that I really found the most interesting takeaway. I went into this wanting to be like to gain power from my labels and gain empowerment from my labels. And what actually I came out of it realizing is that the more that we lay, you know, when you label something, it loses a, an element of itself, right? As soon as it has a name, it sort of is no longer vague and so no longer true because, you know, the truth is in the nuance and, and, and the kind of, like, vagueness of something. Um, and so, like, if being mixed gives you power, that label, take it, keep it. If it doesn't, get rid of it. And I realized that a lot of the labels that were given either from society or we give to ourselves, um, they either strengthen us or they don't, you know? And if they strengthen us, keep them. If they don't strengthen us, just get rid of it. And that's the thing that I came out of the end of this book and going into this tour is the the latest development, which was not there at the beginning of writing this book because I was actually searching for empowerment of my own labels. I wanted to have the labels... Because everyone else had labels, you know, and their labels made them feel good about themselves. And I just didn't have uh, a category to plug myself into. I, you know, I had to make every decision. There's no bandwagon I can like, throw my stuff behind. You know, I have to make all my decisions on the way the world treats me or you know, the way I treat the world all by myself. Um, but what I realized is actually, I think that the less defined you can be, the less. You are limited because you're limiting your own humanity, right? Mm. And this and this goes on to like sexuality, gender, race, politics. As soon as you label yourself, you are losing the capability to be more than that label, and that bothered me. That sounds like a transformative writing process. Yeah, really. it, incredibly so, and it's been super weird to like go and talk to people on this tour and be like, "Wow, I have a you know." The only point of doing anything like this is to transform. You know, as, as cool as it is to have a book out and for all of you to read it and stuff like that, it's like, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here for the involvement and the continuation of m- m- my own concepts of myself. And I'm deciding to do that publicly because why not? You know, it's actually, and also it makes you make bigger decisions about yourself. You're like, wait, I'm saying on the record, this is how I feel. I mean, in five years, I might contradict myself, but, but the, I'm, I want to do it all on the record, you know which is what this is about. Yeah, I mean, and in, in the beginning of the book, uh, something that struck me, you, you say that you were um, sort of struck by this revelation that you have that, you know, forgive me if I'm not quoting correctly, the further that you zoomed out from mix it, mixedness, the, the more you realized how it sort of touched a lot of different groups and sort of everybody. And sure. I was wondering if you sort of wrestled with that tension in writing the book of wanting to sort of honor this specific experience of growing up as a mixed race person, but also um, sort of showcasing the things that maybe unify us all and maybe people who don't identify directly could also see themselves in? Did you sort of see that process? Well, there was no watering down of my experience, but this is the funny thing about being mixed. It's inherently joining. It's inherently about cohesion. Because, like, in my DNA, I am cohesion, you know? It's different than, like, um, it's not about isolation. It's actually about, so as I zoomed out and zoomed out, it's like I realized that, you know, you're, you're ancient, like, three generations ago, your race doesn't matter. You're, you could be a completely different race, to visually, you know, to me. That's why this ancestor, ancestry.com thing is so interesting, right? So people are actually, I think what it does is bring people closer together. Because they're like, oh, wait, I was like, I'm... I'm this, I'm that, I was Filipino, you know, three generations ago. What, what, the, the, I don't see that in my face, but just knowing that it's in your blood. You know, and we're all, I mean, we, you know, there wasn't that many people on earth before we got to seven billion people. We're all from the same stock, whether it's like, you know, Assyrian people or, or if you're talking about like, you know, Genghis Khan and the people of the steppes. Like, that's why I'm such a, a lover of ancient histories because when you start looking at ancient history, you start realizing that there was like 250,000 people making all the decisions and marching around the world of all different types of races and breeding with everybody else. It's like we've been, like ancient Rome looked like New York. Yeah, that really comes through too in your references throughout the book. Um, you draw some so many different interesting things like from pop culture, but ancient history as yeah. well. Um, you know, you and also some other writers in the book talked to, you know, of course about 
facing sort of discrimination because of um, how you grew up and who you are, but also that you see um, being mixed race sort of as a superpower and a way to heal divisions and maybe to heal some of the wounds of the world. Um, do you see that as your superpower as well a bit? I mean, yeah. I mean, if I if I'm if I'm like locking into the the you know the the identity of being mixed, I think that it again, like I said, I think it offers a perspective, a different perspective. I am I can't throw myself behind some of the language and the things that we all hear people say casually. I, people make Indian jokes in front of me because they don't think I'm Indian. You know. I have different perspective. I have access to a different world than somebody who would be a, a full, a full, you know, race of person. You know, and and a lot of people makes people feel that way. You know, you got these girls um, who like, yeah, this one, this one girl story is like she's like she would be people would be making jokes about her father's race in front of her, not knowing that she was, you know mixed and and you know and then and then and then of course when that's brought up it's like oh we don't mean you it's like that access to that is crazy and that's being able to see all sides like that and and something that somebody wouldn't na naturally be able to see it, it's a it's a perplexing and sort of challenging experience um and then there's the mixing of like where you grew up like, a, like I kind of zoom out into, like, it's not just race. It's like, okay, so if you grew up in this type of neighborhood, if you grow up in a monoracial neighborhood, you don't know what's going on. And I don't care what, I don't care what the, the, the singular of that race is. It's like, if you don't see enough faces, you don't have actually a good idea of how the world, how we all interact in this world. Because there's like, you know, you just can't, there's, because you're, as a young person, that's where you're developing your empathy. You know, and I think that's really important. I feel like if you're like, you know, if it's about it's about the diversity of experiences that you're able to um, become accustomed to from a young age. And so, yeah, with me, it's like I, you know, I'm growing up in Indian situations with fully Indian people. I'm, I'm, I'm living in Vancouver, living in like sort of a, you know, white society places. And I'm learning all those things. Plus, I grew up in government housing. So there's all kinds of like it was a very variant group of people. Like you know, there's all kinds of people who grew up in, in this um in this neighborhood, so I learned. I learned a lot and was able to have a, a lot of um, really close, intimate experiences with people's uh, cu cultures and, and their experience in in the Western society with those cultures. I like your shoes. Did we talk about this yet? Oh, yeah. I mean, your shoes is Shit. the real star. I got to say. I don't know. I think this, <laughs> we've talked a lot about this book, but I think the shoes are really the stars of this conversation. Um, I want to talk about the visual elements here because, yeah. you know, it, it is actually such an intimate look into who you are because throughout the book are all these photos, um, family photos of your mother, your father, your grandparents, yeah. um, you as a child, and, and they're so striking and really lend a sort of, of warmth and closeness that you, you feel reading to you. And so I want to know, what was it like collecting all that material? Did you have that sort of on hand or did you have to go to your relatives and ask for that? Because that must have been emotional in some ways too. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the time, I mean, th this book, a lot of my family is seeing these some of these photos for the first time, you know, um, especially family that doesn't have access to my grand my grandmother's photo album. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, uh, I when I first started making this book, when I started, when I finished the writing process, I was like, well, I would really want the visuals to match how uh, personal and revealing I think the writing was, you know, not just for myself, but for the people who also contributed their stories. Um, and so yeah, the, I hand made all the art. That was how I started. I, I made, painted everything by hand, like 250 images, 250 pages of images. Um, and then um, I dumped that on a book designer who made me look like it was cohesive. Um, and then I went around looking, and I was like, okay, well I'm talking about these things. I would like to see if I can find photo examples of these things. So I went to my 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 ba, my papa, my grandfather, and my grandmother, and I was like, can I just take all your, I'll scan them. I'll, how about this? You give them to me and I'll give you scanned versions and then you can like run them at like a slideshow on the TV when you're having tea and stuff. It'll be, it'll be like, that's our trade off. And so, yeah, I took, I took, it was, and it was really, it's an intimate experience because it's like, these are my childhood photos. These are really personal photos to my family and so, and to me. And so, um, yeah, so the decision to add them to the book was to kind of further the idea of transparency and, and just, um,
to expose yourself, you know, because I think, you know, that's, I, you know, like I said earlier, I'm trying to expose, you know, <laughs> I'm trying to expose myself publicly. <laughs> Is that is that how I say that sentence? Um, no, I'm just I'm trying to I'm trying to have a, a, an experience with my own personal identity in public, and it feels a bit like it would be disingenuous to not include photos of that. Yeah. So, you know, something I walked away with too is that as m much as the stories speak to sort of a pain and, and anger, you also really showcase showcase how wonderful and beautiful some of your upbringing was. And, and two poems sort of stick out to me: the ones that you write to your mother and father. Um, and it's just so clear the love that you have for them and how proud you are of them. Mm. Um, and I'm sure how proud they are of you. And mm. I was wondering, what was it like to sort of, to write those two specifically? And, and have they read the book? Have they read some of these poems? What was the reaction? Yeah, they, they read the book. They, 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 they're so proud uh, of me, which is really lovely. And um, yeah, I mean, as far as writing those two uh, letters to them, I just, you know, it was really brave of both of them to enter, to, 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 celebrate their love, I mean, for my father to marry outside of his culture, which is a very, you know, insular culture a lot of the times. You know, Indian culture is a very, you know, um, it's one of the, it's, it's a culture that's very much sticks within itself, you know, a lot of the times, especially when it comes to marriage. Um, and then my mother uh, living, you know, for them to be together in, in, you know, in Calgary, which is sort of like a southern it's like you know it's like um cattle country you know sort of place um and then you know i, ju I just i just wanted to write them a letter telling them i'm just i'm just proud of of the kind of the temple that of that they made of that is our family you know and i think that uh, a lot of people have uh yeah it's 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 a it, it's um it's something you don't get to do yeah usually in any other context unless like yeah so it's it's to be able to do that in this book, and I mean, there's a lot of that, a lot of stuff that's said in this book that I, um, I'm glad I got the chance to say in this way. Yeah, I mean, you speak with such reverence for family, and I, I'm sort of wondering, you know, if and maybe when you choose to have your own children, what what do you want to imprint on them? What sort of messages do you want to send to them before they walk into the world? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I I think I just want them to uh, to free themselves. Um, from not just their their societally imposed um, limitations, you know. I I I'm subbing out labels for limitations now, um, and uh, I'm also just, but also just their they don't uh, removing their own self limitations, which ultimately are society uh, yeah, limitations. And I just want I just want my you know I want my my kids to be able to uh, walk about the world having chosen who they are point by point rather than having that chosen for them based on anything, gender, sexuality, race, anything. I mean, there's so much more we could dive into here. Um, I first, though, want to uh, tell everybody and for you to talk about sort of these speaking engagements tours oh, that yeah. you're doing. Um, tonight you're going to be at the Strand, but yeah. I know you're visiting you come? across Everyone the come. Everyone come. Everyone come? Yeah, come on. It's, it's 7 p.m. at the Strand. It'll be cool. I'll be reading. I didn't really know what to do because I've never, I haven't really been to a lot of poetry readings, um, hilariously. Uh, but so I just, it's, a lot of it's music. Uh, so I'll be singing and, and, and also reading and it'll it'll be cool. It'll be, it's really, it'll be, It'll be fun, and um, so yeah, it's the Strand that I'm Connecticut, and I'm University of Pennsylvania, and then Miami, Atlanta, Denver, Toronto on the 28th. So yeah, so I'm all over. I, it's cool to do a book tour. I mean, that's such a. I feel like I'm acting like an author, <laughs> which is. I feel like I'm acting. You're like very convinced. Person a lot of the time, um, but <laughs> here I am. Um, and also, I have to get into question. Uh, I was such a huge fan of Zombieland, the first movie. Cool. Woody Harrelson and Emma Stone, yeah. uh, Jesse Eisenberg, and you are going to be appearing in this yeah. second one. Is it Zombieland Double Tap? Double Tap. Really? Okay. Yes. So, um, you know, it's been long awaited. That movie was such a commercial and critical success. What is it like to join that cast? And can you tease anything about the film? Oh, it's really cool. I mean, like, it's like it's light fare. It's it's uh, it's like you know, I'm getting yelled at by Woody Harrelson, I and mean, that that's pretty great. That's a pretty that's a pretty good shout, um, and uh, you know yeah it'll, it'll be it'll be fun. It's uh, October eighteenth. I play this character called Berkeley. You know how everyone's named from where they're from in uh, in in the original one, and so I'm I'm playing Berkeley from Berkeley, and 
Yeah, I'm sort of like a, you know, a sort of hippy dippy sort of uh, future person that Woody Harrelson hates. Any good zombie killings going on? I didn't get, I didn't get to kill any zombies. I'm a pacifist. Uh, okay. My character's a pacifist. But um, there's, uh, I've seen bits of the movie, and there's a, there's a bunch of killings involving a monster truck, which is pretty fun. Wow. And Rosario Dawson is doing that, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Things to look out for. Okay, we actually yeah. have a tweet for you before we go to audience oh, wow. questions. Right. Rise Up, Camilla wants to know, what would having a book like yours um, have meant to you growing up? I would have been huge. I mean, that's one of, like, I'd say that's 60% of the reason I wrote this, other than 40% being my own exploration of my own identity. Um, I just wanted people to be able to have something that they could turn to that that that, that allows them to uh, privately, and poetry is great for this, privately meditate on on what their identity is, you know, as a mixed people. Mm-hmm. And um, it would have meant the world to have that. Um, I had to do that at 27, having done 10 years of being in the film industry where you're constantly asked that question or asked who you are, how you identify, and coming up short, answer-wise. So... So yeah, I mean, I would have. It's like would have saved me ten years of work. <laughs> so, so that's good. And we have two audience questions for you. Oh, cool. Hi, you hey. talked about exposing your feelings, and I wanted to know what was your most challenging or emotional poem or sp- story that you put in the book. Wow. Yeah. I mean, <sighs> the hardest stuff. Um, I think talking about my grandparents' initial uh, resistance to my father marrying my mother. Uh, my grandparents were just worried. I mean, now it's very obvious to me. They were just worried that 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 they that my you know that my mother wouldn't get how close fa- how important family is to the Indian community and to the family, you know. Um, and really, quite the opposite was true. I mean, that my mother is like you know, she's like calling my grandmother every day and making sure everything. You know what I mean? Like they just they just didn't know if they would get the daughter that that the culture asked for, you know? And I think, um, I think that was, you know, that's, that's, um, that's a kind of a personal thing to put into a book, but I think it's got such an, a lovely ending and such a lovely, uh, result, which is my, my, no, like, no one loves my mother more than my grand, my dad, my dad's parents, my grandparents. That was like, you know, they adore her and, and adore us. So as kids, so, um, yeah, so that was probably the most personal and, and probably the most, um, revealing and exposing, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. We have one more question for you. Cool. Hey. Hey. Um, I was just wondering if there was something that you really wanted to be in the book that didn't end up being in it. You know what? I did I did have I had some beautiful poems written by people who never ever got back to me with the document that allowed them to be <laughs> in the so I wrote I'd written a bunch of poems and uh we're putting them in the book and uh we just we they never emailed us back with the thing, so we had to drop those poems. It's like three poems. Um, so, I, and actually, it's funny, the book came out, and they all emailed me like, oh, can I, I'm like, well, it's, it's sort of printed a bit. That's, you can't, that's not how it works. It's not the internet. You can't, like, insert something in afterwards. Um, but yeah, I might, I might just, I might just post, I might just post a couple of those later at some point. I mean, nothing was, nothing was removed because I thought it was too much. I was really, um, uh, I try to really challenge myself as much as possible with what I was comfortable putting into the book. Yeah, thank you. She walks back. <laughs> I like well, the walk in question, the walk away. That's funny. Perhaps there could be sort of a second collection in store. Yeah, maybe. If I get, get enough, I, you know, I really enjoyed uh, curating and collecting everyone's stories. That was really, um, really helped me with my own um, questions that I had for myself. So that would be something I'm interested in. Well, thank you so much uh, for talking with me today. Everyone, make sure to check out Mixed Feelings and also see him on tour around the country. Yeah, come Um, to the Strand, 7 p.m. Let's give it up for Admin, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you. 